Hi guys, and welcome. As you can see, I brought myself a new hat. With summer rapidly approaching, I thought I'd better get something to cover up my head. I can no longer rely on hair to do that for me. But that's left me with a bit of a problem. What to do with the hat when it's not on my head? So I've come up with this wee project, which I think will do the job, and I thought I'd share it with you. Here it is here. Oh. Here it is here. It's made with two wooden horseshoes. One of them supported on dowels. It's got rubber feet on the bottom. And when the hat's in place, it rests on the top horseshoe. And the brim is kept about an inch off the uh, surface that this is resting on. And that should prevent the brim from being distorted. Let's have a look at how to make it. I'll be using this piece of Remu to make the base out of. As you can see, it's got some fairly hideous wallpaper on it. And unfortunately, it's also not flat. It's got a bit of a rock to it. The first thing I'm going to have to do here is flatten the board. Now, to flatten the board, I can't clamp it down with my traditional clamps because they'll get in the way of the cutter. So I'm basically clamping it between two points here with my cam clamp so that it's locked in place and I can machine the whole board without getting a clamp in the way. I'm going to bring the cutter in and zero it on this corner. I've made a file that's basically just a pocket and its cutting depth is zero. I'll be bringing the cutter down to the surface of the material here where I'll then tell the cutter that it's at a height of 0.5 millimeters. That way, when it machines the board, it'll take half a millimeter off the entire board. Once I've done this side, I can then reverse it, zero the cutter to the board again, tell it it's about half a millimeter or one millimeter, and machine it flat, depending on how much it needs. I'm not after a particular thickness of this board. Basically, I want to leave as much material on this board to use when I'm finished. Now that that's complete, I have a nice flat board. I've got this little edge of paint here that hasn't quite gone yet. But that's because the board actually sloped down like this here. It used to be a large skirting board. And that's not going to be a problem. As long as the main body is flat, that's all that counts. Now, that's nice and flat. I should mention, I actually put the cup side down. That meant it rested on these outside points. Which means that uh, I'm going to get the, most, the flattest uh, piece. If I would put the bowed side down, it would have rocked side to side. This could have ended up in any position. But by putting the cup side down, it rested on these outside edges here, and it made it basically as flat as it was going to be. So I'll just now brush that away. I can now turn this over, lock it in place, reset the cutter to the lowest point here, which will be about the center here, and then I can tell it that that lowest point is half a millimeter and it will machine this entire board down and machine away half a millimeter at the lowest point giving me the thickest possible board out of this. With the wood now machined flat, I can take a ruler and check what thickness it is. It's come out at 20 mils thick, so I will adjust my model to suit this piece of wood. I want as much 
thickness to this piece of wood as I can get and that will give me a bit of extra weight to the base which is the reason I'm doing it. I'll also when it comes to machining make this the top side and that's so that I can keep an eye on this piece here because I can guarantee if I turn this over and machine from the other side I'll end up leaving this on my uh, completed job and which will only annoy me. So by putting it up most I can see it's there and I won't make that mistake. I've clamped my material to the table. I've just removed this clamp for the time being so you can see what I'm doing. I've set my X and Y zero to this corner here and I've set my cutter to the surface of the material. Now I've moved my cutter manually to a position X10, Y10 and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to start by drilling a small hole and this is a good hint for those who uh, are worried about losing position when they're machining something. If the cutting gets interrupted or what have you, you'll know exactly where this hole is so long as you don't move the material from the table you'll be able to reset this back in position. I'm just going to gently jog the Z down and make a small hole there. Now I've picked this position here because I know that this will not be included as part of my design. So I know it's outside where I'm cutting. I can now replace the cutter, or the clamp I should say, onto the table. But what I'm doing is you can see this one I'm putting on a slight angle because the cutter is going to want to zero to this corner and the clamp will be in the way. My first cut is being done with a ball nosed bit. I'm doing that because I want a slightly rounded bottom on this cut. It's just for aesthetic purposes. I've now changed cutters from a 3mm ball nose to a 3mm end mill. With this cutter, I'll be doing the rest of the machining on this piece. I've now given this a sand and put a wee bevel on the edge here using the router table. I've cleaned up around the edges here and also I've got some small remue dowels, 6mm remue dowels which will go into these three holes here. I'll be using the drill press to drill these holes out to match the size of the dowels. Just going to let the drill find its location itself, and once it does, 
I hold down the model and let the drill do its job. I've set the stop on the drill press to ensure that it doesn't drill too deep. Using the same techniques I used for leveling the board that I made the base out of, I'm going to use the same to level this side of this old weatherboard I've got here. Now that the piece has been machined, you can see a couple of little problems. One, there used to be a nail here. Well, that's not going to be an issue because this piece of board is bigger than I need it to be, so I'll be able to avoid that no problem. I also have this bit here that I didn't cut away. So I'm just going to run this through on the table saw, square up this edge, and just get rid of that bit there. Now, as with everything, there are several ways of uh, doing this sort of thing, but I've chosen what I think is going to be the best option for me anyway. I put the newly machined side face down and I've created a custom file for this piece of board which is now 20 millimeters thick to machine the horseshoe uh, that I want out of it and it's going to be 12 millimeters thick when I'm finished. To ensure that I end up with a 12 millimeter piece when I'm finished I've zeroed the cutter to the table in the usual manner. As you can see, I've started by machining the groove for the nail holes first on this model. Because I haven't leveled the whole piece of board off, I actually have to dig my way down 8mm to get to the surface of the horseshoe, and then follow that up with another 3mm, which is the depth I want for this particular groove to start with. Now the reason I'm doing this particular bit first before cutting my way down to the model is it will save me having to change my tool out. This particular one's being done with a ball nosed cutter. If I do this first I can then change to a 3mm end mill and complete the rest of the model without having to change cutter again. It may take me a little bit of extra time to cut my way down to it but I don't mind if it saves me having to change my tool. To drill the holes in the bottom of the horseshoe, I made a small template out of MDF. I attached it to the bottom of the shoe using double sided tape and used it to drill the pilot holes. After that I followed it through with the correct size drill for the final holes. Well the moment of truth has finally arrived. I've cut my dowels here to length and I can now put them into the holes of the horseshoe here and then turn it upside down and put it in to the lower horseshoe. Now you'll notice there is a, a slight amount of slop in these uh, that's a good thing here because if these here were really tight in the holes when you come to glue it in there's no room for the glue to squeeze out. If you haven't got that uh, you will not be able to get the dowels all the way down to place, so uh, just that fraction of slop is not a problem. Alright, time to put the hat on it, and there we have it. Sits on it, the brim doesn't touch the ground, it's well supported around the top here, over this entire area here, rather than just on one point. 
and there will also be some uh, little rubber bumpers under here as well. I'll probably put three, which will always give you a level surface. Trying to put four on, if the surface you try and put on is not quite level, it will always rock. But three will always hold uh, steady. The final thing I've got to do is put some form of finish on it. And I'm thinking uh, maybe an oil finish for this here, and it should really bring the colour up of the Remu. So I've got here a bit of a mix of uh, mineral turpentine and linseed oil. The uh, Adding the mineral turpentine should allow it to soak in a bit better into the wood, a bit faster. Now you notice I haven't glued the dowels in yet. I want to try and get as much of this done without that. And I'll, that'll just make it easier, especially on the insides here, where once the dowels are glued in, getting into these here will be just a bit more difficult, so getting it done now will be make life a lot easier. Also in this area here, And I'm just going to very carefully come up to this hole, but not get it in it. Hopefully that means that any glue that perhaps gets on the surface here won't stick to it, won't show up. Once the first coat of linseed oil had dried, I glued in the little dowels and the top horseshoe. I've now given it a couple more coats of linseed oil, and once this coat is dry, It'll be completed. So there we have it, the completed horseshoe hat stand. If you'd like to make your own, I'll put links in the description box below to where you can download the files. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.